Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Public Coin, and I'm excited today to share with you uh, one of the best pieces of US anything ever, and that would be the uh, educational series banknotes. The one, the two, and the five. So we're going to go ahead and look at all three of these notes that are considered to be among uh, the premier, the pinnacle, the ultimate, I don't know, what do you want to say? You put in your adjective here, we'll play Mad Libs, and you can tell me how you would describe these banknotes. But uh, the level of detail on the educational series notes is uh, legendary, and with good reason. We chronicled our own pollution, which is fantastic. We remembered the Constitution, also fantastic. Signers, probably not as important to most of us. But also, here's the series of 1896. But without those signers, by the way, that was, you know, where would we be? But every little detail in these banknotes is amazing. Uh, this is my favorite, the one. I've just always been enamored with the overall detail, the way that the entire banknote is artwork. Just, there's the facies, you recognize those as being on the back of the Mercury dime. The multidimensional levels of this, I mean, if you look at the stand that Liberty is sitting on, I mean, it's it's just beautiful the way it sticks forward. I, I would love to see this put into a stone sculpture. I mean, just, just remarkable. And there's actually a backside to the note, too. Little known fact. With uh, Martha and George Washington on it. Also lovely. So, PMG graded this note uh, an AU55 with a minor foreign substance. So, always it's good to have those notes. I believe the minor foreign substance is this little area here but I'd have to look um, a little closer because that, that's the only thing that really popped up. But sometimes it'll be hidden because it'll be kind of inside, but then you've got to decide, okay, is that a minor foreign substance right there? Or is that just some of the thread that goes into the banknote naturally? So I've had banknotes where that thread is just sticking out and it can be very hard to tell at times. So. You know, at times you'll see guys at coin shows with this apparatus taking a look from either side of the banknote to see, you know, if there is something that's popping up. So I am curious about that little spot here by the one. But all in all, a note like this trades for somewhere around the $2,000 mark. I'm just going to use round figures. These notes were... Um, in, well, designed and engraved, right? So I got different different things rolling through my head here, and I, I'm supposed to use the correct terms. So if we get out the Friedberg book, you, you'll see that um, W uh, Will H. Lowe engraved, pardon me, designed W. H. Lowe engraved by Charles Schlecht, which is a great name for all you <laughs> people who speak German, all this not Schlecht. So, history instructing youth, um, and then the back design, I think was, uh, let me see here, engraved by Charles Burt. Uh, okay, going off of the original engravings. So, those are both very cool, but then when you get to the other bank notes, here's the two, you'll see that it was also engraved by Charles Schlecht uh, and GF Smiley. I always call him Smiley like Guy Smiley, but his name is probably pronounced not Smiley. Uh, designed by Edwin H. Blashfield and Thomas Morris. Uh, also then when you get to the five, you find out that um, also engraved by uh, GFC Smiley, uh, but the painting was by Walter Sherlaw um, with the border elements designed by Thomas Morris. Just absolute pieces of artwork. If you like paper money, you know, you want to get the paper money book by uh, the Friedbergs, right? That's just a thing that everyone should have who likes collecting US paper money. All right, we gotta look at the two. Super excited about the two. 
and also a note that just has an amazing look to it when you look at the detail, the level of engraving on these banknotes. Anyone know how hard it is to draw hands? <laughs> Some of you do. Some of you know exactly how hard it is to draw hands. I know that may seem like a silly thing, but for those of you who appreciate detail and understand art, I'm not saying that that's me, but I'm just saying, did you ever see, I think you'd see a segment on a numismatic channel where the main focus was hands. But it gets to the point of just the incredible talent that the guys had that made these these banknotes. And then once again, you get to the scroll work and just how the little details, there's a little hidden to there. There's always these extra, on a lot of these denominations, you'll see the denomination kind of snuck in in different places throughout throughout the note. And then, you know, Act of August 4th, 1886, it just blends in, and it's details that you wouldn't necessarily see unless you take the time to see. All righty. There's some nice awards on the back of this here. I'm going to give you the, the view here of this AU55 note that they say has been uh, retouched. Now, retouched can mean a lot of things, but retouched usually means a little bit of ink has been added. And uh, for my show notes here, we'll take a look and see that the um, that is uh, inventor Robert Fulton and Samuel F.B. Morse on the back. Portrait engraved by Lorenzo J. Hatch. Uh, so this is actually considered to be science presenting steam and electricity to commerce. Uh, you know, fascinating this whole series. So you've got the time frame, of course, of 1880, uh, pardon me, 1896. So you are three years after the um, three years after the Columbian Exposition where all of that stuff was really popping. Like that is just where everything came came to be. So so when it comes to the retouched, oftentimes, you know, that can be hard to find. But you'll see little pieces of ink that have been moved somewhere. I always look at the eyes first for that. I don't know why that is. But, uh, you know, when you have these comments on banknotes, it's not too different than the comments that you see on a coin where it can say cleaning, and yet, you know, it may have very little change in the value of the note if it's very minor or the note is very rare, same with the coin. But also, it can be pretty major. And so one of my things that I'd love to see them do is I'd love to see them somehow map out the area and be able to tell you exactly where something has been retouched. Now I'm not going to spend the video trying to find the spot on here because we got one more, one more banknote to look at, which is considered to be kind of the granddaddy of them all. This is considered by most to be the most beautiful banknote that the U.S. has ever produced. And the allegory on this guy is um, electricity presenting light to the world and uh, showing how electricity will dominate the world and they're not wrong and of course on the back you're gonna have uh, Ulysses S. Grant and Philip Sheridan on the back of the note well let's take a look at some of the details on this guy here as electricity roars through the capital light bulb right and you see the transition here as it goes actually from the lightning bolt to an electrical cord to Liberty holding 
holding the light bulb and there's the horn almost coming like an announcement but uh, of course electricity riding in on some pretty mighty looking steeds here and once again you look at the amazing scroll work on this note There's, there's just not a whole lot to not love about these things. The series 1896 kind of just, every little bit of space is used in a way that's attractive. So these will have different Friedberg numbers on them. This is Friedberg 270. Usually, like this, this note in particular only has three different Friedbergs. That just means three different types. The notes themselves are basically the same, but it'll be the, the signatures that change. Like this is Roberts and Lyon. It's Lyons, right? It's got an S on there. Sometimes you say things wrong for years until someone corrects you. You see series 1896 kind of buried up in there again. But then you see some of the, how fine the print was on the edge here for the uh, Bureau of Engraving and Printing. And a little spot right there. So net VF35 choice beautiful thing closed pinholes and of course there's Grant and Sheridan and uh, just a lovely allegory on the back as well so closed pinholes we'll see if those will pop up or not that'll be a little bit harder maybe I'll just do something later on those but sometimes you'll see um, some darkness pop up like maybe well, that looks a little bit more like a small rust spot than anything else right there. But there was a spot on the edge over here that we were just looking at that made me think that there was some slight repair. You see that darker line there. Very, very tough grading on this note because, you know, a VF, this note has a lot of life to it, a lot of body left to it. So, and this is very hard to do on camera, but so usually if you see closed pinholes will show up as a little bit of a dark spot with light in the background because of, because of, uh, it adds like a layer, like, right, is that one right there? It adds like a layer of material. I'm thinking this, this is one right here actually. Anyway, beautiful note. Both the two and the five in the condition that they're in are, are going to kick around that five thousand dollar price point. Um, in you know these are tough. If you want to try to collect this note, um, I've seen VGs sell for about a thousand, but it is it is a tough note to get into for sure, for sure. All right, guys, thanks so much for looking at those bank notes with me. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.